a couple of days ago, Mrs. Fatma Ali telephoned my son Rajesh Lal to say that she was organizing a press conference for Ashali and she wanted me to come over and be the chief guest. Since I have been ailing for quite some time and not physically in a position to come over to the press conference, <coughs> I regretted my inability. Thereupon, Mrs. Ali said that could she take a video clip by coming at home? I said that was all right, have a cup of tea and have a video clip as well. So this is what it is. Now I would like to say a few words about Arsh. I think he is a born genius, an all-rounder. I understand that when he was only five years old and was in Kathmandu in a hotel, he drew the picture of Pashpatinath temple on a paper, uh, paper napkin and it was true to details. I mean, such is his genius and love for art. Arsh met me first a couple of years ago and he brought with him a copy of my Yasnapur report which was published in 1950-51. And he has gone through the report which is very strange and old report he had gone through. He wanted me to sign it, which I did. But I was really surprised because there are so, so many reports which I have myself not read. Arsh is, I should say, a born archaeologist. Whereas we take decades and try to get something in archaeology. He is much more than what we are. So this is a God-given thing. Because at this early age of 17, to acquire so much of knowledge is really remarkable. And he knows not only Indian archaeology, but quite a lot of Egyptian archaeology, of Mesopotamian archaeology. He can freely write the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian script. And recently he has made some interesting discoveries of the time of the 3rd and 2nd and 1st century BC, which resulted as a contact between India and Egypt. For example, there are certain coins, certain portraits inscribed uh, in the script of 2nd, 1st century BC in Alexandria and elsewhere. While all this is all right, I would like to draw his special attention. Of course, he has made a beginning in that direction of deciphering the Harappan script, which is the greatest challenge today to all of us. Many people have tried to decipher the inscriptions. There are some who think that the language there is, is a Dravidian one. For example, Asko Parpola of Finland or Walter Affairs, I was from USA, 
Rai Mahadevan of India, they say that their language was Dravidian. On the other hand, there is another group of scholars which says that it was Sanskrit. For example, Richter Roshanis of Europe, S.R. Rao and M. V. Krishna Rao of India, according to them, it is the Sanskrit language. But the whole interesting point is that none of the Dravidians agree with one another on their readings. Each one goes his own way. In a similar manner, none of the Sanskritists agree with, uh, that they have the same finding for the same inscription. There is a basic point which people forget. There should be a basis a reason for giving the phonetic value to a particular cell. Why do you give it a, uh, X value and not Y or Z? Uh, and equally important is the point that once you have given it a value, you must be consistent all through your decipherment and maintain the same value. But most of these people have what they have done is having given a value once, they again change in the course of their further progress for the same data. Now this is unusual that a letter will have different values uh, at different places. This consistency is very important. Now I will be the happiest person on earth if and when Ash is able to decipher this script, I think the trap is waiting for him. I personally have great love and regard for him and I wish him a long and very successful life. Thank you.